because the name was uh, out there in the news in the last uh, two days, mm -hmm. that during the recession, Nigerians actually uh, did more shopping than expected because shop rights in South Africa, which is the uh, uh, group uh, reported that its sales expanded almost 30% mm -hmm. and said it was because folks in Nigeria and Angola, two largest oil producing countries in Africa, yes. were buying more. Yes. Even though there was recession, recession and country. oil prices went down. Yes, I think that, that, is, the, that is telling of the resilience of, the, of Nigeria's retail sector. I think ShopRite were able to source most of their products locally. Despite import restrictions, foreign exchange shortages, what they, were, what they did was they sourced most of their products locally. And in response to the lower disposable incomes, they were smart enough to embark on aggressive promotion campaigns. They reduced some of their prices, discounted some of their prices, and that made their sales too resilient. And that's a very good advice for Nigeria's retail sector. I think several think tanks have told, have said that Nigeria's retail sector is very promising in the next five to ten years to be boom. And there's still so much space for expansion. That we are hungry yeah. for good things of yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> We are hungry yeah. now, yeah. on the belly. Mm. And even in a recession, Nigerians were buying more yes. from everything you yes. can find yes. on the shelf. Yes. Yes. So that gives us a good story for our consumer good space, yes. don't they? Yes, it did. A very good story. Investors, Nigeria, this is the place to be. If, if, and especially in the real estate sector, this is the place to invest in. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not likely to believe you folks anytime, any soon when you say there's no money. Because in a recession, we contributed to South Africa's shop right sales. There's no money, but Nigerians are just generally resilient. We're just a resilient group of people, which you'd have to agree. Yeah. We don't like going. We don't like going hungry. <laughs> we don't like going hungry. Uh, even when the markets and everything is down, mm. we want to keep the upbeat outlook on life. So folks go for a few bottles, no alcoholic, non-alcoholic, yes. a few more. Uh, pastries and things like that. Yes. It's amazing yes. that how to make money in a recession. Yeah. That's a very interesting story. And, and I'm sure on, on social media has been all over since yesterday that Nigerians actually did more shopping at ShopRite during 2016 recession. That's something that will go down in history. Yeah, yes, indeed. Yes, okay, indeed. okay. Now, if you look at, so now despite the fact that a number of states were not paying salaries mm -hmm. and pensions were hanging yes. and there was recession, yes. so we, we did more shopping. Now, the vice president uh, hinted there's going to be selective minimum wage increase. Mm, yes, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I don't know whether this is still up for, still, up, still in for consideration. What selective minimum wage process means Minimum wage will vary across states. Let's say in a very expensive state like Lagos, the minimum wage is much higher compared to, let's say, Ebony or Kara. So it's a good initiative because we need a higher minimum wage. We, 19, we don't know how this is going to work out. 19,000 yes. doesn't cut it. We need more. No, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, cut, it doesn't yeah, cut any ice. Yes. It doesn't cut any ice. Yes. But maybe, um, oh, now this is going to be very tricky for me and very difficult for me to say. Perhaps states that are very rich, like Lagos, yes. shouldn't do any minimum wage yet, increase. Mm -hmm. Maybe we give it to states that are much. But the cost of living in Lagos is really... It's very expensive. I think there was one EIU survey in Nigeria. This is a bad advert for Lagos, but Nigeria is at least one of the least livable cities because of the very expensive... Expensive, very expensive. Cost of living. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, so we need minimum wage here, uh, just in case some folks out there think I don't think so. Because the money comes in, and, 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 and of course it goes to, uh, the, the, to consumption and, 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 and Ambude's economy here. Uh, so uh, that's how it goes. Uh, what's, what are the other good news that we have here? And uh, we can put, just push that up for about, put, uh, put that up for that. Uh, something about capital importation? And uh, just look at the figure uh, yeah, this Yeah, capital importation increased by nearly almost 100% compared to Q1. I think it's about $1.87 billion. And that is a testament of our... Uh, IEFX window, more investors are buying Naira denominated assets and injecting Forex into the economy. So I don't see us having any problem with the exchange rates. 
So, barring any um, shock, shocks, mm. we should be on a good. We should be home and fine. Yes, uh, we should be uh, home and dry uh, as far as capital importation uh, in terms of FX. Yes. This yes. this figure looks good. almost two billion yes. uh, U.S. dollars in, in second quarter, and we're now in the, at the middle of uh, a third quarter, 95 yes. percent. I'm sure this is something uh, Godwin Emefile and the rest of his team will uh, beat their chest about at the next definitely. MPC, yes, <laughs> <laughs> which, which is in September, <laughs> which is just September, uh, corner, a few yeah. weeks around the corner. Just about four weeks from now, yeah. we'll have that. Uh, diesel prices, uh, when I saw a little bit of diesel prices around 160, uh, and I drove past a few uh, gas stations, and I said, hold on a second, 160? Used to be 200, but looks like things are getting better. Yeah, even not too far back, it was 170, but I think they're trending down, which is, and this is, despite... Our per per output from the natural gas has declined, has fallen below 3,000 megawatts a couple of times. And in spite of that, our diesel prices are still not increasing. So that is very good for businesses and consumers alike. That's very, that's very good. I, I don't use diesel. Um, <clears throat> but do you? I do, yes, of course. I, most, uh, of course, everybody uses diesel. Well, I'm, I'm sure. the only one who, 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 who does not use diesel. I uh, just stick with uh, a petrol uh, generator, oh, okay. uh, and that I seem I can manage. I'm sure, yeah. Uh, okay, right, thank you. Right. Thank, thank you very much. It's good to have you here. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, see you again from Financial Derivatives Company, one of the uh, research analysts. But, of course, let's take you through uh, the big seven oil majors in our market. You heard about the heat by the Inland Revenue Service yesterday at the approved facility of MRS. Of course, on the same day that MRS uh, Oil PLC held its uh, 2016 annual shareholders meeting to declare some dividend and, uh, and, and move forward. In the meantime, if you take a look at the big seven, and you can see where we finished off with that negative uh, subsector landing on, on Wednesday. 40 oil down about 1%. Uh, mobile lost 5%. MRS was unchanged. Of course, that news has no impact on the MRS uh, PLC. Orlando lost about 0.28%, uh, uh, 2.1424 million uh, ordinary shares. Uh, take that away and look at the last uh, two. Total was down almost 5% and separate on change at 482. So let's wrap that uh, as far as the energy market is concerned. We'll come back after the break. The sugar story is not over. We talked about the deal yesterday. We'll hear from Maliko Dangote himself what he has to say uh, after the break as far as this new $450 million sugar planting and production in Niger State is concerned. But first, the man who is looking to sell $300 million depository receipts to Nigeria by the name Benedict Orama. 